Hello everyone and welcome to Mechatronics and Robotics Tutorials. In this tutorial we provide clear and detailed explanation of kinematics, equations and geometry of motion of differential wheeled robot or differential drive robot. In the first part of this tutorial that you are currently watching we will derive the equations describing the kinematics of the differential drive robot. In the second part of the tutorial, we will explain how to solve the forward kinematics problem and how to simulate the robot in Python. And in the third part of this tutorial, we will explain how to solve the inverse kinematics problem. But before I start with explanations and derivations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 350 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Over here you can see an example of a differential drive robot. Here's the photograph of the differential drive robot. The robot consists of two wheels, wheel 1 and wheel 2, that are driven by two DC motors. Over here is the first DC motor. The robot body is supported by caster wheel. Here's the caster wheel. It's a passive wheel and it's not being actively moved. This figure shows the top view of the differential drive robot after a few geometrical simplifications that do not affect the model generality. We have two wheels left wheel and right wheel. And here's the robot base. We can observe three velocities, VL, VB and VR. The point L is the center of the left wheel, the point R is the center of the right wheel and the point B is the point on the line connecting L and R. And this point sits at the middle of this line. The velocity VL is the velocity of the center point of the left wheel. Similarly, the velocity VR is the velocity of the center point of the right wheel. These velocities are a direct consequence of the fact that the wheels are spinning due to the torques exerted by the motors. In this figure, the robot is turning left. This is because the intensity of the velocity VR is larger than the intensity of the velocity VL. In fact, as we will explain later, in this configuration, all the three points, L, B and R, will describe concentric circles centered at the instantaneous center of rotation. This point is also known as the instant center of rotation or the instantaneous velocity center. Here, it's very important to emphasize the following. We can completely control the robot's motion by controlling the right and left wheel angular velocities or the right and left wheel rotational angles. The velocities VL and VR are linearly proportional to the angular velocities of the right and left wheels. Next, let us illustrate several motion scenarios. In this scenario, the robot is moving straight. This is because the intensities of the velocities VL and VR are equal. Consequently, the instantaneous center of rotation is at infinity and all the points describe straight lines. That is, this point describes the straight line, this point describes the straight line, and this point describes the straight line. In this scenario, the robot is moving right. This is because the intensity of the velocity VL is larger than the intensity of the velocity VR and consequently the robot will turn right. Next, let us look at this scenario. Over here, the robot is rotating around the point B. In this case, the intensity of the velocity VL is equal to intensity of the velocity VR. However, these two velocities have opposite directions and consequently the robot will spin in the clockwise direction. To conclude, by changing the velocities of the centers of the wheels, or equivalently by changing the angular velocities of two wheels, we can control the robot's motion. We can either turn left, right, or spin around, or even go along the straight line. 
In the sequel, we provide a detailed kinematic analysis of the differential drive robot. We want to establish the equations that will relate the angular velocities of the two wheels with the velocity of the center of the robot and the angular velocity of robot's rotation. Let's analyze this figure. The coordinate system x, y is a fixed or inertial coordinate system. On the other hand, the coordinate system xb, yb is located at the center b. This coordinate system is rigidly attached to the robot's body and often it's called the body coordinate system or the body frame of the robot. The point C is the instantaneous center of rotation. From the velocity analysis perspective, during a short time interval, the robot seems to rotate around the instantaneous center of rotation. This point is constructed by finding an intersection of the line connecting the top of the velocity arrows with the line passing through the centers of the wheels. That is, we basically construct the line starting from here, then going through this point, and we just draw a straight line. And then we find intersection with this line, the line that passes through B and has this direction. It's perpendicular to XB, and this will define the instantaneous center of rotation. The symbol omega denotes the instantaneous angular velocity. This angle theta is the rotation angle of the robot's body. This angle is at the same time the rotation of the body frame with respect to the inertial frame xy. Under the assumption that the intensities of the velocities are not changing during a time interval, the points L, B, and R describe a circular trajectory centered at the point C, and this is illustrated in this figure. Over here you can see a detailed kinematic diagram of the robot and let's explain all the symbols and quantities such that you can understand derivations. X and Y are the translation coordinates of the body frame attached to the point B with respect to the inertial frame X and Y. Theta is the angle of rotation of the robot, which is at the same time the angle between the body frame and the inertial frame. XB and YB are the coordinates in the body frame, and at the same time they denote the axis of the body frame, XB and YB. C is the instantaneous center of rotation. Omega is the instantaneous angular velocity of the robot body. L is the center point of the left wheel. R is the center point of the right wheel. B, that is the point over here, is the middle point between the points L and R. VL is the velocity of the center of the left wheel. VR is the velocity of the center of the right wheel. VB is the velocity of the point B. Phi L is the angular velocity of the left wheel. Phi R is the angular velocity of the right wheel. L is the distance between the point B and the point C, that is the point of instantaneous center rotation. R is the radius of the wheels. S is the distance between the points L and R. X dot is the projection of the velocity VB with respect to the x-axis and y dot is the projection of the velocity VB onto the y-axis. In the sequel, we will derive the equations that relate phi L and phi R with x dot, y dot, and theta dot. These equations will enable us to predict the robot center point velocity as well as the angular velocity as the functions of the control variables phi l and phi r. That is, we start from the assumption that the following quantities and parameters are known. phi l, phi r, s, r, and we want to determine theta dot, x dot, and y dot. Let's derive the equations. 
Over here, you can see this very important kinematic diagram and focus over here. If you don't know any quantity or if you need an explanation, just look over here. Let's start from this figure. And first, let's express VL and VR as functions of omega and L. Obviously, from this graph, we have that VL is omega times this distance from L to C. And this distance is nothing less than L minus S over 2, where S is this distance. Similarly, we obtain that VR is omega times this distance from here to here. And this distance is L plus S over 2. And consequently, we obtain these two equations. Now, the issue with these two equations is that both L and omega are not known. Consequently, we need to solve these two equations for L and omega. Starting from this first equation, we can express omega like this. Then by substituting this equation in this equation and by manipulating the resulting equation, we can finally obtain the expression for L. Now, by substituting this equation in the first equation, that is in the expression for VL, we finally obtain this expression. And by manipulating this expression, we can find the expression for omega. So omega is simply VR minus VL divided by S, divided by this distance. And this is very important. Now, for clarity, let us repeat these two expressions. That is the expression for L and expression for omega. And these two equations are very important for our next derivation. Next, let's analyze figure 8. What is x dot? Let's see. x dot is the projection of VB on the x inertial axis. And that's obviously VB cosinus this angle theta. Similarly, y dot is VB sinus theta and theta dot is nothing less than omega. This is a very important observation. And this follows from the fact that the angles are perpendicular to each other, or better to say they are equal. For example, you have this angle and you have this angle. Obviously, these angles are equal mainly because they have perpendicular sides. This side is perpendicular to this side and this side is perpendicular to this side. Consequently, this will be angle theta. And omega is nothing less than the first derivative of theta. And that's the last equation over here. Let's continue. These three equations can be written like this in a compact vector matrix form. On the other hand, we have that the intensity of the velocity Vb is equal to omega times L times the distance. Now, by substituting L on omega in this equation, we obtain this equation, that is, this form. Vb is simply Vr plus Vl over 2. Now, by combining this equation with the equation for omega, that is, with this equation, we finally obtain the equations given in 12. These two equations can be written like this. What's the importance of these equations? These equations enable us to predict Vb and omega as functions of Vl and Vr. And keep in mind that we can control Vl and Vr since we can control the spinning of motors. Now, by substituting this equation, that is the equation 13, into the equation 9, we obtain this equation, and after multiplying this part, or better to say this matrix with this matrix, we obtain this equation. And this system of equations can be expanded, and finally we obtain this system. The system of equations 15 relates the controlled wheel velocities, Vr and Vl, with the velocity projections of the center B of the robot and the angular velocity of the robot. It's a very important kinematic equation. However, we know that the wheel velocities are actually functions of the wheel angular velocities phi L dot and phi R dot. 
Let's observe this figure. Since the radius is r, we can say that vl is r times phi l dot. Similarly, vr is equal to r times phi r dot. These two equations can be written compactly like this. By substituting this equation in equation 14 over here, we obtain the equation 18. Here is the first equation, and once we multiply this matrix by this matrix, we obtain the final form. This last equation can be written in the expanded form. That is, we obtain the expression for x dot, expression for y dot, and expression for theta dot. And this equation is the final derived equation in this tutorial. It relates the angular velocities of the left and right wheels with x dot, y dot, and theta dot. That is, this equation enables us to predict the global robot velocities and angular velocity as functions as lo of local joint velocities. And this is very important. Also, this equation will enable us to predict the robot trajectory and to solve the direct and inverse kinematic problems. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.